gentlemen, dear viewers, today's build is about shouting, sneaking and slaughter. Just for the sake of upcoming Christmas, I decided to treat myself with the most OP version of a character I played back in 2012, the Ranger of High Hrothgar. The idea is to be a nimble fighter with a huge sword and a powerful bow. The versatility of this build is rather amazing as you should be able to act like a sneak archer, a combat archer, a warrior and a close range assassin. It is uh, very satisfying to sneak attack reliably with a huge two-hander. It is all made possible by the use of alchemy and many many shouts, including some modded ones. Speaking of mods, this one needs a few of them. All these mods will work together to create this unique fast-paced playstyle which I am about to show you. Summer Mist will be the main reason behind focusing heavily on shouts because we will place the enchantment randomly reducing shout cooldown in three item slots. There is also an enchantment there to increase our sneak attack damage which make a two-handed assassin more viable than usual, and an enchantment to increase our movement speed. <laughs> Thunderchild shouts and powers will allow for some shout combos, like having elemental fury and slow time active at the same time. We will also combine two standing stones from Andromeda to get some unique abilities, like another boost to our sneak attack damage and combat speed and, and many other cool things. <laughs> Righty then, as I said, pretty, pretty OP. I will even leave a link uh, to the other most OP builds of mine <laughs> in uh, the description. Now for the build, and uh, let's start with a little backstory. mountains of Skyrim are your home. You grew up in a little woodland shack with your father who taught you how to hunt and survive in the wilderness. He passed away when you were just a young boy. You lived off the land in loneliness ever since. The survival skills were not the only wisdom he bestowed upon you. He was a follower of the old ways the old Nordic pantheon of Shore and Kine. He used to tell you the stories about the Greybeards, Jürgen Windcaller and the Way of the Voice. These stories stayed with you for years. One day, a few weeks after your 30th birthday, you were hunting near the town of Helgen. That day, you saw it. A giant, flying reptile, black as night and terrifying. It burned Helgen to the ground and flew away. You knew that day that you have to hunt this beast. You will travel to High Hrothgar and pledge your allegiance to the Greybeards. So they teach you the way of the voice. And you will make High Hrothgar your new home, which you will protect against monsters and villains to the best of your abilities. It is your destiny and your burden. Finally, a backstory that isn't so darn dark and grim. A proper hero of destiny this time, and a hero we both deserve and need to cover all the skills and combat techniques, you will need all the three attributes in the ratio shown on screen. It's unfortunate, but your enchantment slots will all be used for skills, shout cooldown and speed, so early in the game it might be necessary to keep a full stock of fortify health and healing potions. At times you will probably also need potions for elemental resistance. Luckily, alchemy is one of our main skills and become ethereal shout will also help very much against mages, so try to get it as soon as possible. 
The combination of Andromeda's Serpent and Shadow's Standing Stones is a build in itself. It creates a very engaging and tactical playstyle. You become extremely skillful in silent and rapid killing. You can close the gap between you and those pesky mages with almost no effort. It plays a little bit like Shadow of War, but without loot boxes. Uh, this playstyle requires some planning ahead, since you will have to pay for sneaking in Magicka. An alchemist like you can easily offset this little problem. But you should probably store the Serpent Stone in the Ethereal Crown to switch these mechanics off when needed. Nord is my race of choice, mainly for roleplay reasons, so well also for the sentimental reasons, as this is a modded recreation of my very, very old playthrough. You could also consider a Wood Elf, High Elf or a Khajiit. A uh, high elf will go very well with the serpent stone and its pay to sneak mechanics. Wood elf will give you a starting bonus to your archery, which you probably want to max out as fast as possible. Speaking of archery, almost every perk in this tree is a fair game, except for the bull's eye and possibly steady hand, which I did take for convenience, aka I'm a crappy archer, but you should be fine with just uh, the slow time shout. This heavy investment in archery will grant you the ability to switch between combat and sneak archery. With your movement speed bonuses, the Ranger perk will be particularly useful in archer versus archer combat, letting you dodge the enemy arrows with your bow drawn and ready to fire. You will also be able to deal some heavy damage with your trusty Skyforge Steel Claymore. With all the bonuses to sneak attacks, you can deal 4.6 times the normal damage with a two-handed weapon, plus two times the base damage from critical charge, of course, if possible. Critical charge is rather essential, as it goes so well with Silent Roll Sneak perk. This combo is also improved by your speed bonuses. So, of course, you should put the left-hand side of Sneak Tree high on your list of priorities, especially Silent Roll. Grab the next perk, Silence, at your first convenience. On the right side you need Deadly Aim and, unfortunately, you will have to waste a point for Backstab, which isn't useful to you at all. You may see me using the Shadow Warrior in this video, uh, but after some consideration I don't really think it's very useful to this build. Uh, once you are discovered, you can focus on a warrior combat style and buff yourself with shouts. No need for the ninja stuff here. As a proper ranger who lives off the land, you will also need some skill in alchemy. You are way too noble to use poisons, but physician and benefactor will help you immensely. Plenty of potions will be of use to you, including invisibility, healing, regeneration, fortify alteration and fortify two-handed effects. This build is about planning ahead as much as it is about rush and heroic confrontation. So stay in the shadows, assess danger and think about the best potions to use before the start of a combat. You may need to use Magic Resistance quite often and Fortify Alteration to increase the duration of slow time. In the Light Armor skill, take uh, this pretty standard set of perks, going for the Wind Walker on the left, which is a perk of unquestionable utility to all Agile fighters. The build is rather stamina hungry, so faster stamina regeneration should work like a charm. Your armor rating after some smithing should reach the value of around 450, which is enough, although you will still need to be cautious in long fights. These skills may be enough if you use the Honed Metal mod, which provides crafting services for you. If you wish to be completely self-sufficient, which fits this character very well, you should go for extra effect perk in enchanting. <laughs> well, duh! I take it way too often. You know what? New rule, no enchanting for me in the next three builds. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm gonna break that rule anyways. These two perks in smithing will let you improve your super strong bow and the Skyforge Steel Greatsword. 
it's a lot of power at the cost of two perks. Skyforge steel weapons are the best if you want your weapon maximally tempered, but don't want to spend too much perk points in smithing. They have the base damage of elven weapons, but need one perk less to fully upgrade. This is a lengthy perk list, but without the optional perks you'll be done at level 52 or maybe even 50 if you decide to skip smithing perks. You could still try to use a smithing on sword with some proper smithing gear and elixirs even without the perks. Your trusty two-hander should remain unenchanted forever, because we will use elemental fury as often as possible. As our bow of choice we will use uh, the bow of the stag prince. Arguably the best bow in the game, especially when it comes to damage per hit. Also, it grants a small boost to your attributes once 20 animals are killed with it. The bow may be hard to obtain, uh, so go for Zephyr first if you want a unique bow earlier. The build wouldn't work as well as it does without the Ethereal Crown, which will store the Serpent Stone effects for us and can be worn with the hood from our Northern Ranger outfit, which means you wouldn't have to sacrifice light armor perk benefits and armor rating. The Amulet of Talos should be used before your enchanting reaches 100, at which point you can switch it for a necklace with Fortify Archery and Fortify Two-Handed. At this point you will also rely on a random cooldown timer reduction granted by the Summer Mist mod. Other than that, the rest of your apparel will be enchanted by you. And here is the list of enchantments to use. Remember to place the Deep Breath enchantment on three items, as it will stack with itself. Use some strong fortify enchanting potion when applying this one, well, actually use it for every item of course, but with a Deep Breath it's vital. With enchanting skill at 100, you should be able to reach 50% chance of reducing shout cooldown to 3 seconds, which is absolutely hilarious and more interesting than some flat constant cooldown reduction. Fortify Archery should be placed in 2 slots and so should the Summer Mist's Fortify Sneak Attack. Contrary to the backstab from the base game, this enchantment applies to all weapons and unarmed attacks, the rest can be used just once. And here is the list of shouts. First, the vanilla ones. The first two will also be the most frequently used. Become ethereal against mages and dragons and elemental fury against pretty much everything else. Whirlwind sprint is great to keep your distance in archery fights. Slow time, especially when buffed with Fortify Alteration Potion, can also help a combat archer immensely. Mark for Death is just, you know, awesome. And uh, Aura Whisper is here since the build needs some tactical thinking at times. You will also use these shouts from Thunder Child mod. True Shot is the hallmark of the build as it fits the combat style, rewarding you for shooting your enemies from long distances with additional damage and, with all three words, flinging your enemies in the air with the first successful shot. If you have all the words of True Shot, you should find the pillar of True Shot, which can upgrade this shout even further. With this upgrade, if you shoot after using the shout, a few star shards or something will fall from the sky, harming the enemies near your target and reducing your shout cooldown with each hit. Neat! Riftwalk will combine with your shadow step power, as the two word version of this shout works quite similarly, but doesn't cost you any stamina. Warcry can be used in tight spots to swiftly regenerate your attributes. John's Shadows or Yon's Shadows is a very unique scouting power. After using this shout, you can sneak close to an enemy, perform a sneak attack and then immediately teleport back to the place you stood when using the shout. And three Thunderchild powers should come into the mix. 
First, the unyielding storm, which you can use once a day to reset shout timer, and the quest ability called Storm Crown, which removes the cooldown when you enter or leave combat, and then another ability called Thundering Echoes, which makes it so the first shout used in any combat has no cooldown. Just imagine all the amazing possibilities coming from so much cooldown reduction. You can use slow time and elemental fury one after another, sometimes even with marked for death. This will do to the hardest of the bosses what PewDiePie does to T-Series. <laughs> yep, it will obliterate them. So, mobility, agility, tactics and overwhelming fury of blows are what you should expect from this adventure. If you wish to play a build like this but without mods, you should probably use some restoration loop to reduce your shout cooldown to, say, 30% of the standard time, and then use the dragon aspect shout in harder fights. Okay, dear viewers, that is it for today. Hope you will have a lot of fun with this one, I sure had. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comment section and come back for more cool builds. We will see each other again. Bye bye.